Hello, we're starting. Oh, welcome back. So in the previous session, we talked about some of the features uh, that are available today or coming soon. So let's uh, move on to the future. Um, so t in, in this section, I'm going to talk about our plan for the future of RocksDB. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm seeing, um, I'm a software engineer at uh, RocksDB team. Um, so first is our mission. So what's our goal? What do we try to make? Um, we try to make RocksDB a, a fast, um, easy to use storage engine, uh, a persistent key value store for any workload on any hardware platform. So this is an extended version from the description of RocksDB on our, our website. So we're gonna extend it. So our goal is after a year or two, we can replace this old mission to the old one in our website. So how to achieve this? Um, in order to achieve this, oops. Ah, okay, this page is missing. But uh, um, in, o in order to um, achieve this, we plan to focus on three major things. We plan to uh, focus on Efficiency, um, make it e easy to, oh, it's, it's still there, e easy to use and improve the performance. So these are three things we're going to focus on. I'll go, I'll, I'll go over the one by one. So efficiency. So efficiency is important for us. It's important for this company and I I assume it's important for everyone. So uh, the Mark Callahan, the next speaker, he ever joked about our, he, he, he said, um, our strategy, our big data, is to make it smaller. So wh what he means is like the efficiency is important just to make, um, so for, for the same hardware to store more things, that is important for this company. So we have been working on efficiency, uh, focus on, focusing on the space efficiency in the past two years or so. So it's pay, it, it is being paid off by this our MyRox uh, 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 efforts. So we have proved that um, by replacing the InnoDB engine with our RocksDB engine in MySQL, um, we can save half of the space. So this is being rolled out. So we need, we need to look for the next opportunity after the space. Um, so we identified two opportunities. First is to store more data per host. And second is the tier storage. So first is store more data per host. So by optimizing for space, we improve the efficiency of using the flush. So now we're thinking about improving the efficiency for other components, other hardware components, other than the flush. So by, um, so our strategy of doing that, or the, our thinking, is to store more data per host. So automatically, f to store the same amount of data, we can use a uh, fewer number of hosts. It also means less CPU, less RAM, and less racks, less physical space, less fewer everything. So it's the biggest challenge is um, the memory to the database size ratio is going to drop significantly. And at the same time, the CPU per storage is also uh, increasing uh, significantly. So in order to make sure RocksDB can work well in this hardware setting, 
Um, we plan to work on several features. Um, we, we plan to use the memory more efficient. Um, so the mem uh, we, we have less memory, so we need to cache data. Uh, to cache the most important the data, um, we can use more information of the L LSM trees to figure out what's the most important to cache. And we will live in a situation that the index and Bloom filters are likely to be evicted out and uh, read back one uh, during the read query. So we need to uh, make sure the index and Bloom filter block sizes are decreased. So when we need to read them back, um, we don't pay a lot of overhead. Uh, we need to support direct IO, uh, which Iron uh, has introduced our first step because we know if the memory size is limited, um, page IO does not perform very well. And uh, we need to reduce CPU usage to make sure the CPU can, so uh, can serve uh, more sorry, services. And we need to prepare the environment that uh, multiple IO reads will be needed for every query so we can reduce the latency by parallelize them. So that's what we plan to do to support a har the hardware setting that's storing more data per host. So next, our uh, next uh, uh, plan is to use the tier storage. So Carthage has introduced um, this. So the plan is to insert a, a fast storage tier between the memory and the slow storage tier. So by combination, hopefully, uh, we can use uh, the, the, the uh, uh, serve more data um, for the same amount of cost. So like Karthik has introduced, we have two ways to make of use this um, uh, architecture. For, first is to use this faster as the uh, persistent recache, which um, Karthik introduced. And an another thing, uh, we started a little bit, but we, we can do more, is to store the most recent updates in the fast storage as a read buffer and only store the, um, the, 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 the older snapshots in the slower, slower storage. So translate to the language of L LSM, it means that the higher level um, will be stored in the fast storage and only the last level or two uh, should be stored in the slower storage. So these two are um, are orthogonal to each other. So combination, we can make this happen. Uh, tier story more efficient. So that is the efficiency part. So the next focus will be easy to use. So what is what we have, uh, the features we have to make this manageable, um, we have uh, several different channels to help users to figure out what's going on inside of RocksDB. We have stats, DB property, listeners, lots of things. And we also allow users to change options while the database is running when they observe the stats. Um, this is good. Um, this is very helpful for lots of users. Um, but it needs some expertise to, um, to get the, the most optimal uh, performance. So our goal is to make it easier, not just powerful, but easier. Um, so we plan to improve in three aspects. Um, starting from new users, uh, we hope we can make it easier for them to getting started using RocksDB and achieve some reasonable performance. So after the system is running, um, we will make it um, easier for users to know what's going on inside. So the instrumentation should be better. And in case the user has a need to further tune the system to an extreme, we should make it easier for users to do this. So I'll go over them one by one. So first, getting started. Um, the users should be grab this and uh, run it in reasonable performance. So that means the out-of-box performance should be reasonable. So we will um, improve the defaults of the options. They should just grab one and should be run reasonable. And we will simplify options. Um, the, we will re reduce the number of options they need to worry about and make the options more intuitive for users to set. Um, the second is to improve the instrumentations. Uh, we will improve the stats so that there, there are too many channels for users to know what's going on. We should consolidate them to one channel 
they would go to one channel to figure out what's going on. And uh, uh, we'll help users to track the history of stats. They should run a RockDB query and know what's going on in the history so they can uh, correlate with what, what they do or what happened in the cluster. And the stats will be um, in lower, oh, uh, uh, lower overhead, uh, which we have, Andrew has improved uh, quite a lot. So we should be freely adding new stats without worrying about the cost. And the, the, the um, stats should cover um, the actual IOs. So by doing, by using the direct IO, we should be able to uh, allow RockCB to know the actual IOs, not just IO, IO read from the file system, which is we don't know whether it's IO or not. So another thing we need to work on is to, for us to be to detect the workload patterns, whether it's read heavy or write heavy, or whether it's spike read or it's a spike write. Um, and it should also tell um, the workload have changes. So be, be, please take a, uh, uh, be careful because the workload changes. And also we will need to uh, build a, uh, uh, a tool for users to easily collect all the read and write traces and replay it in on another host, so they can uh, try out different features, different tune ups without actually impacting the pro the production. So that's the instrumentation. So in the end, is the e e e easy tuning. Uh, we should uh, um, suggest users uh, what the parameters they can try out to achieve better performance and. Um, the ultimate goal is to make it auto-tuning in some sense. So we will improve the some LSM algorithm to make it adaptive. Um, some of the LSM options we, we don't have to worry about, like the L, L, L1 side or whatever. Um, should not, we should, should worry about these kind of things. And we should also consolidate the options for these options, like memory. They should get one single memory setting, and RockCB should figure out where should put this um, memory to. And uh, like number of background threads, RockCB should figure out whether they should use uh, flash or compaction or going out. So that's an easy tuning. So putting things together, uh, we hope we can make RockCB easier to tune by improving um, this, uh, make it easier for users to getting started, make it uh, easier for users to know what's going on while the database is running, and further tune it. So that's our plan for the easy to, to run, easy to tune feature. So uh, the third focus is the performance. Um, the RockCB started as a fast storage for Flash, so performance is very important for us. We need to keep improving it. Um, to, 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 to keep us ahead. Um, so there are several features, several aspects we addressed we should focus on. Uh, first is blob storage. Um, Enderbank has introduced. Um, we're going to uh, keep improving this blob storage. And there is the write throughput. So RockCB is kind of write optimized because of write uh, amplification, but in terms of the peak write uh, rate, there is still room we can improve, and there is requirements we should uh, we should achieve, um, and we should make it easier for users to export a part of a database and ingest to in an, another host. And Islam has introduced this bulk loading, and we should finish the other side, which is data exporting too. Um, and we will uh, improve the performance for RockCB on the remote storage, like HDFS. So there must be some interest on that. So um, these are what we plan to do. So there are things that users always ask, do you plan to make RockCB uh, like distributed key value store? Do you plan to uh, make a step up as columns or OLAP? So these, we know this is important, um, but this is not our current focus. However, um, we have some open source solutions to solve some of these pro problems. So we have my rocks and Mongo rocks, which Mark will introduce in the next talk. And we also have uh, open source friends to help us achieve a lot of things, like Bo will introduce in the second half about their replication tool on top of RocksDB. And there is also the open source banner copier, 
Um, if you came before uh, uh, previous meetups, you will heard us uh, the 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 the, the rock uh, the rock couch DB. Um, and there is uh, a cockroach DB, and there's also uh, other company like like Thai DB doing the similar thing. So if you have requirement like something like that, give those open source solutions a, a try. Um, hopefully that will solve your problem. So that's our plan, our future of Rocks DB. Uh, we will make a fast and easy to use persistent key value store for any workload on any hardware platform. So in order to achieve that, the three focus we, 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 we plan is efficiency, easy to use, and performance. So that's a good fu fu future. So you can help us, or we can we we should together make this future happen, or it, or some other things you want to do. How you can join us? So one thing you can join us. You, you can go to our wiki page. There's open projects page. There are list several features we think they are needed, but we don't. We didn't plan to work on in the near near future. If you are interested, you can grab one of them and contact us. We will be happy to help you to implement this. Um, it's also valuable for you to share uh, share your feature request and your pain point to us or, or to the community, so we can all work together to improve. So you can do this through our mailing list, or say Google group, or go to the Facebook group. Um, these two channels both are accept, accept by us. They have pros and cons. Um, Google groups has a pros of it's better searchable, and the Facebook group, if you post something, it will feed to s many people, so you may get very fast response. It's up to you to choose which one to use. And uh, it's also valuable for you to share the box to the community. You can just open the GitHub issues or just send a pull request. Um, and it's also valuable to share us your story of using RockCB. Um, you can come to the next meetup um, to share your story. And if you have use cases, you can add to our source code. So there's users.md. Um, it's just send a pull request with user.md. Um, with the description of your use case. And if you have another language bend binding of RockCB, just, just send a pull request and add to the language binding.md so everyone can see um, what, what you're doing. So thank you for joining. Thank you. So we still have uh, three minutes, 45 seconds. So it's open to questions. Any question? Can so can you can you go to the stem? Sorry, we're talking about uh, tiered storage earlier, and I don't know. This might have been answered before. When you talk about slow storage, are we talking about spinning storage? Are we talking just about maybe slower SSD storage? Uh, we're, we're, we're talking about both. Yeah. Okay. So we try to make a general solution to work with both. Okay. Thank you.